I'm still after him to sing a couple of songs for me, but, uh, uh, and uh, I appreciate Brother Bruce. He's been faithful over the years to church. One thing he's done is stayed in church, and I appreciate that. And as a young person, that's, that's not easy sometimes, but uh, I'm sure his mom had something to do with that. But, uh, but we're glad for him to, uh, to be here and to sing and to use his talent for the Lord. All right, Revelation chapter 1, uh, verse 10. And I've been preaching, I've started preaching through our doctrine. And I put some doctrines, copies of our doctrines back there on the table. They're there for you if you want to, to look at them. So uh, I preach, first of all, about the second coming of Christ. Our church believes in the second coming of the Lord Jesus Christ. And I preached about the Bible, the Word of God. And we believe the Bible. And so I want to read tonight from, as I said, Revelation chapter 1, verse 10. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Let's pray. Our Father, we come before you. We're thankful to be able to be in the life chain today. We pray that hearts were touched and people's lives were changed because they drove by and because we prayed and because, Lord, uh, people all over this country are taking a stand against abortion, taking a stand for life. Now, we thank you for service today. We thank you for this uh, Lord's Day and we praise you for it every Lord's Day. And Lord, we just ask you now that you will just uh, help us through in this service tonight. Uh, help us through the power of thy precious Holy Spirit. And Lord, just bless us, we pray, and we thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. I want to preach tonight on the subject, the Lord's Day. The third article of our church doctrine states, and I quote, the Bible teaches the sanctity of the Lord's Day, Sunday, and that Christians are to refrain from work and worldly pleasures on this day. You know, throughout the Old Testament, the Sabbath uh, day is on Saturday. So when you're reading in the Old Testament and you read about, and even in the New Testament, when you read about the Sabbath, you're reading about Saturday. That was the seventh day of the week. The word Sabbath means to cease to do or to rest. This is the day that God rested after he'd created, he'd see, spent six days creating everything, the heaven and the earth, the Bible tells us. And then on the seventh day, he rested, he blessed the seventh day, and he sanctified it. That is on Saturday, that's the seventh day, that's the, that's the day the Lord sanctified and blessed. The Sabbath is a special day. It is a holy day in the Old Testament. It is one of the Ten Commandments. It is the Fourth Commandment. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. So it's one of the Ten Commandments. Now, uh, so the Sabbath was kept by the Jewish people because it was part of the law. It was God started it whenever He rested on the seventh day after creation. Then He gave it as part of the law in the Old Testament. So the people who were under the law up to the time of the New Testament kept Saturday as the Sabbath. But, the, but when Jesus Christ died on the cross and rose from the grave, the Christians eventually, and I stress that word eventually, kept Sunday as the Christian Sabbath or the Lord's Day. They took Sunday as the Lord's Day because that is the day Jesus rose from the grave. Uh, this, is, this is seen in the book of Acts in Acts chapter 3, verse 1, verse, chapter 5, and verse 12, and verse 42. You can see as you read those verses that first the Christians were worshiping with the Jewish people in the temple. They kind of saw themselves as an extension of the Jewish religion because the Messiah is Jewish. Jesus is the Jewish Messiah. Now he is the savior of the world. He's king of kings and he's lord of lords, but he, he is the Messiah of the Jewish people. And so the, the, the disciples saw Jesus as the son of God they saw him as the Messiah. And so when Jesus went back to heaven and the day of Pentecost came, they were still worshiping with the Jewish people because they saw, the, they saw this as a fulfillment of Bible prophecy. And they believed that this was a part of the Jewish religion that is an extension of the Jewish religion, that Christ had come as their Messiah. 
But as you go on in the book of Acts, when we come to Acts 13, we find the great missionary church. First of all, you had the, the, uh, the, the church that was founded in Jerusalem on the day of Pentecost with the 12 apostles uh, who was the leader, leader of the church there in Jerusalem. And so everything, everything centered around the church in Jerusalem until a persecution came and Christians were scattered uh, in other places in the world. And when they went up to Antioch of Assyria, then first of all, Jews were saved there. The gospel was preached up there. And then if you read the book of Acts, you find that Gentiles began to get saved. And there was a great number of Gentiles. And then you find, as you read on through the book of Acts, that there in, in Antioch of Assyria, that church became the second headquarters or the second major place for, for Christianity because it became the great missionary church. That's where Paul uh, was, was going to church and was teaching and, and conducted his three missionary journeys from. So you see, when we come to the book of when we come to the 13th chapter of Acts, Christians were meeting separate from the Jews. There had been persecution. The disciples had been, uh, pr uh, the disciples preached as they scattered from Jerusalem. It was then that the Gentiles were saved in Antioch of Syria and a missionary church was established. Then you come to Acts chapter 19, verse 9. And it tells us in Ephesus, Paul had to separate the Christians from the Jews and he disputed with the Jews daily in the school of Tyrannus. Uh, then in Acts chapter 20, and, and, and I stress there, again, you see the in the book of Acts, you see the gradual changing uh, of Christians worshiping with the Jews, and they began to realize, because they were being persecuted, they began to realize they had to establish uh, 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 churches, they had to establish places they could worship separate and apart from the Jews. Then you come to Acts 20, verse 7, and we are told the disciples came together to break bread uh, on the first day of the week. And that was the apostle Paul when he went to Miletus and he called the elders from Ephesus and he gave them that great charge that he gave them there. But you notice by this time now in the book of Acts, they have changed from worshiping uh, in the synagogues with the Jews and in the temple with the Jews in Jerusalem. They have changed and now they are worshiping by themselves. They're no longer worshiping and the day of the week has changed. They're no longer meeting there on the Sabbath day. They're meeting on the first day of the week. Now we go to 1 Corinthians chapter 18, verse 2. And the church of Corinth and the churches of Galatia, we are told there, were to give their offering to the uh, poor people in Jerusalem. On the first day, they were, to, they were to take their offerings on the first day of the week. So we see again, they're worshiping on the first day of the week. And then we come to the, the scripture I read tonight in Revelation chapter 1 verse 10. And John was in the spirit on the Lord's day. The Lord's day is Sunday. The Lord's day is not the Old Testament Sabbath. The Lord's Day is the first day of the week. It is Sunday. It became the Lord's Day because Christians began to worship on Sunday because that's the day Jesus arose. That's why we're here tonight. We're here because Jesus arose. And every Sunday we are, we are celebrating that fact. Every Sunday, you know the disciples, whenever we're preaching the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And we are celebrating the resurrection of Jesus Christ every Sunday. That's why, and that's how the Sabbath was changed in the Old Testament. The Old Testament. See, we're not, we're not under the law. We are under grace. And we are, we are uh, the church. We are different from the Old Testament. We are, we are a parenthetical. I'll preach about that in just a little while. But we are different from the Old Testament. First of all, the Lord's Day should be a holy day for Christians to worship the Lord. I was in the Spirit, John said, on the Lord's Day and heard behind me a great voice of a trumpet. And that's when he received the revelation of the, book, uh, the revelation of the book of Revelation. The apostle John was worshiping the Lord on Sunday. He was worshiping the Lord on the Lord's Day. Now that's when he received that vision and he was worshiping because he was a Christian. By the way, Christians are to be different from the world. Christians are to be separate from the world. 
We worship on Sunday because Jesus arose from the grave. That makes us different from all other people and all other religions of the world. We are worshiping the Lord because He's alive. We don't worship a dead Savior. We worship a risen Lord. He's alive. Sunday is the Lord's day. John had been exiled to the Isle of Patmos because he was a Christian. In Revelation chapter 1 verse 9, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation and in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ was in the isle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. John was on the isle of Patmos and he tells us why he was there. He was a persecuted Christian. The Roman Empire didn't like his preaching because he was preaching Jesus and him crucified. He was preaching that Jesus rose from the grave. And he said, I was there for the word of God. Folks, we need to stand up for God's word. We need to believe God's word. I preached on that last Sunday night. This church believes that the Bible is the inerrant, infallible, plenarily inspired word of God. That means we believe every word from Genesis to the book of Revelation. We believe it's God's word. Every, every the, every Every preposition in, every a, we believe it's God's word. We stand on God's word. It is the inerrant, infallible word of God. And so John said, I was on the Isle of Patmos because I dared to stand up and say, the word of God is true. Do you believe that tonight? Do you believe God's word? Do you believe God's Bible? There's a lot of people who doubt it today. There's a lot of churches today who doubt God's word. Folks, let me tell you something. You can believe God's book you can stand on God's word because it's always true. It will always be true. It has always been true. God's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He doesn't change, and his word doesn't change. He was there because of his testimony. He said, I was on the Isle of Patmos. He said, I, John, who also am your brother and companion in tribulation in the kingdom and patience of Jesus Christ, <clears throat> was in the aisle that is called Patmos for the word of God and for the testimony of Jesus Christ. He was on this island. I've been there. Praise God. I had the privilege of being there. It's just off the coast of Ephesus, just uh, off the coast of Turkey, what we call Turkey today, out in the Aegean Sea. I saw the cave where they say John lived, and they made that into a, a church, and they worshiped there. I want to take some pictures, but they wouldn't let me take any pictures. But uh, I got some pictures. I didn't steal them. I just got them from another place. But you can actually go into the cave where the Apostle John lived. Now, he was there because of his witness for Christ. Boy, there needs to be witnesses for Jesus today. Let me tell you, folks. All that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Have you thought about that word, all? There's no exceptions. When we live for the Lord, the world will not like it. Now, I'm not saying that you and I ought to seek, ought to seek uh, uh, persecution or that we ought to want people to dislike us. Just the opposite. We try to reach people. Amen? We try to love people. We try to care about people. We try to care about the sick. We try to care about people's needs. We want to love people and care about people. But sometimes when you believe in Jesus, people will not let you love them. They will not let you care about them. And sometimes people even hate you because you believe in Jesus Christ and you live for him. John said, I live for the Lord, and this is where they put me. I own a little island, rocky island. And John was there because he was a Christian. He was sent there as punishment. He lived in a cave and had, uh, had to scrounge, as I understand it, for food and for his livelihood. livelihood. It was not an easy life. It was a hard life. And John suffered. He was on that island, and being on that island and in that situation, he kept the Lord's day. You know, the Lord's day is to be a day of worship. Sunday for Christians should be a day of worship and rest. Now I want to read something to you. I want to take you over to the book of Colossians. Take your Bibles and turn with me over to the book of Colossians. And I want to read chapter 2, verse 16. Colossians 2, 16. Now listen carefully. It says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. 
You see, the Jews had several Sabbath days. They had the weekly Sabbath, and they had other Sabbath days. Uh, but the scripture says, Let no man therefore judge you in meat or in drink or in respect of an holy day or of the new moon or of the Sabbath days. But now what I'm preaching about tonight is not a law. What I'm preaching about tonight, today, tonight is not something that we should judge people about, but it is something we should keep as Christians, I believe. Keeping the Lord's Day as Sunday because we're saved people. The, the church is different, amen? We're saved people. We believe in the Lord. There's, there's people out in the world, and there's people in other religions. They don't keep the Lord's Day because they're not saved people and they don't believe in the Lord. But listen, the Bible tells us that John was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. Nobody made him keep the Lord's Day. Nobody made him keep a Sunday, but he kept it because he loved the Lord. And the, and the Lord's Day is a day of rest. The principles of the Old Testament Sabbath still apply. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 20, verse 8 through 11. Exodus chapter 20, 8 through 11. I'll do some reading tonight. Uh, beginning with verse 8 in chapter 20. You're familiar with this. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Now remember, this is Old Testament. But the principle of one day in seven still applies to the Lord's day. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Boy, it's not kept holy today. You know, I'm, I, I hate to keep telling you how old I am. But I'm your elder, and you're supposed to show me double respect. And these guys will say, amen, when I say, I don't know about them. But you know, I was raised in a time when the Lord's day was the Lord's Day. I was raised, and I think it was this way, over most of the United States. The stores were all closed. You couldn't go to town and go to Penny's or to go to uh, uh, Sears or go to uh, another store. They were closed. It was the Lord's Day. It was, you couldn't, you, you didn't go to work. There was a few people. There was a few people. There's a few factories that were worked. That worked, I guess, and some other things that went on. But for the most part, 90, I'd say over 95 percent of everything shut down on Sunday. And boy, I tell you, it was great. It was great for people to have that one day, uh, that one day of rest, that one day, uh, that time when they didn't have to uh, be concerned about, the waitresses didn't have to go to the restaurants because the restaurants were closed. The, they didn't have to work on, they, could, they, did, well, they weren't forced on Sunday. The workers in the factories didn't have to go in on Sunday. They weren't forced to go in on Sunday because the factories were closed. It was a time of rest. It was a wonderful, God wants to bless us in everything that he does and he wants to bless his people when we keep the Lord's Day. You know, the, the, the Old Testament Sabbath was a day of rest. It was a time for people to stop whatever they were doing and think about God. And let me tell you today, we live in a world when people need to think about God. One of the things that's going on, man, we live so fast. And we got so much to fill our time up. I have a cell phone. I used to kind of laugh at people and, and say, look, look over there. Look, look at those people sitting over their cell phone. They got nothing to do. They sit around and, and look at their cell phone. I find myself sometimes sitting around in a doctor's office or something or wherever I am looking at my cell phone. My mind just keeps racing on. With the well, listen, folks need time to stop. They need the time to think about eternity. They need the time to think about God a little bit. And the Lord said, you need one day, one day in seven. Ford Motor Company a few years ago decided that they could make much more money if they worked seven days a week. Now, it's quite some time back, but they decided that they could make more money if they worked seven days a week. And after a period of time, the company decided to go back to a six-day work week. The experiment had shown that when people work seven days without a day of rest, on a continuous basis, it actually reduces the output of, of the workers and causes individual physical trouble. A spokesman for the Ford Motor Company said, seven days of toil had ill effects 
on the workers. Proving God's word is right. Showing that man needs a day of rest. Showing that man needs a day to reflect and to, and to be with his family. Let me go on with Exodus chapter 8. Excuse me. Exodus chapter 20. Let me be strong. Remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shalt thou labor and do all thy work. But the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor <coughs> thy daughter, thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy, str thy stranger that is within thy, within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is. He's pretty busy. And he got it all done in six days. Amen? Not billions of years. Six days. Amen? Amen? For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and hallowed it. You see that? You see, the Lord, the Lord didn't have to rest. God didn't have to stop what he was doing. He could have just went right on. He, should, he could have went right on doing other things right through the seventh day and right on into the next week, but he stopped. And he set an example that because he knew that his creation, not only men, but animals, even machines, it's been proven that if you run a machine, you just constantly run a machine and run it and never give it a rest, it'll break down. God has created this body to, to, to be healthy. But when, when people violate the Lord's day, when they don't take that one day of rest, and they, by the way, it's not just that they rest, but they, that they give their life to the Lord and they live for Him. Bad things happen. Listen, living for the Lord is good. Keeping the, the Lord's day is not to be a burden. Keeping the Lord's day is to be a joy. I like to be in church. Amen? Even when I'm not preaching. Amen? I can, I can go back and remember as a boy and as an adult and all my life, in fact, church services. When we gathered together and I heard a great man of God preach God's word and, I had, and we had fellowship together and we had a great altar service. We prayed together. We wept together. And what a blessing. It's not a burden. You see... If you don't enjoy the Lord's, if you don't enjoy serving the Lord, it's probably because you're either not saved or you're not close to the Lord. Something's wrong in your spiritual life. Because, listen, I can, I can sit at home sometimes and just read the Word of God and get excited about what I read. Because I'm saved. Because I have the Holy Spirit in me. And the Lord's day is the same way. See, when you, when you love the Lord and you're saved and you know the Lord, it's not a burden to take one day and dedicate it to the Lord and say, I'm going to give this to God. I'm going to worship and I'm going to be with my family and I'm going to rest. I'm going to do what God wants me. It's not a burden, folks. That's one of the greatest joys we have in life is to have Sunday. The Lord's given us Sunday to, to celebrate and to worship Him. Secondly, the Lord's day is a testimony to the world and a witness between us and God. Revelation chapter 1 verse 10, I was in the spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. That's what I want every Sunday. I want people to come through that door Sunday morning and I want them to sense that the God in heaven is here. I want them to sense love like they've never experienced in the world. That's why we want people to be welcome here. We want, we want children to be welcome here. We want teenagers to be welcome here. We want, we want Brother Stewart to be welcome here. We want people to be welcome. Amen? We want them to experience the love of God. I was in the Spirit, capital S, the Holy Spirit. I need to be filled with the Spirit. Boy, when I get up and preach, I pray. You don't know how hard I pray every week. God, fill me with thy Spirit. Give me the message. You know, you singers, you got it so easy. You, you people got it so easy. All you did was go to church this morning.
you got a whole day off and you get up and you, and you, and you come to church and, and, and you got the afternoon off unless you were over there with us and sometimes there's, there's things that, but you, you go home, take a nap, come back to church and praise God, but you got to you'll be a preacher. I get up and I preach the best sermon that I know how to preach. It may not be very good, but it's the best sermon God will give me. It's the best sermon I know how to preach. And I spend, I spend a week preparing for a couple of sermons and I work hard and I labor and I work hard and I labor and it's over in 15 minutes. Oh, well, maybe it's 30. I'm kidding you. Amen? I'm not kidding about studying. <laughs> but to be in the Spirit. Amen? John was worshiping. He wasn't just saying some songs and he wasn't just going through the motions. He was in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit on the Lord's day. Now he was out there on the Isle of Patmos, rough place. There were other, other people out there. They had also, many of them, been put there because of different reasons than John was. And I don't know how many of them were aware of him, but I got a feeling that the testimony of John, the witness that he was, all of them knew about John. Because you know what he did? I believe the first thing, the first big thing he did when they laid him off the boat, I think he probably witnessed to the people that took him over there, and I believe he probably witnessed to the first people he saw, and he just kept on witnessing every day. They knew about this man. They knew he was different. But on Sunday, he stopped scrounging for food, and he focused on the Lord. There were people there who saw his testimony. You know what happens on Sunday if you're a Christian? Your neighbor across the street watches your house. And they know whether you went to church or not. Your neighbor down the street know if you took time just, they know if you work on Sunday and if you care if you do or not. They know about the kind of person. They, see, they, the world watches a Christian. They watch a Christian more than they watch a convict. Because they want to know if that guy's real. You see, the world is lost. And they may, they may try to act like they don't like Christianity. And some of them certainly may not. But, but let me tell you, praise God you live a Christian life. You live for the Lord and you be real before them. And praise God they'll respect you and you'll feel a hunger in their life. They're looking for what's real. The world's not real. God is real. God's church is real. John took time off here. You see, the principle of keeping one day in seven is still a witness to the world. Turn with me to Exodus chapter 31. And let me read verse 12 through 16. Well, I turned to Exodus 12. Let me turn. <laughs> All right. That's not going to work. Exodus 31, verse, verse 12. And the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations that ye may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. Ye shall keep the Sabbath therefore, for it is holy unto you. Everyone that defileth it shall surely be put to death. For whosoever doeth any work therein, that soul shall be cut off from among his people. Six days may work be done, but in the seventh is the Sabbath of rest, holy to the Lord. Whosoever doeth any work in the Sabbath day, he shall surely be put to death. Wherefore, the children of Israel shall keep the Sabbath to observe the Sabbath throughout their generation for a perpetual covenant. You see what God says there? He said, this is a covenant and he made a covenant with the children of Israel. And by the way, in Israel, they're very secular. And most of them have just kind of a strange belief about God. But there is an Orthodox group there that still tries to go by the Old Testament. But you know that on, 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 on the Sabbath day, on, on Saturday, everything shuts down. Everything that's Jewish shuts down. 
Now, I guess the police force still runs. I guess the hospital still run. But I'm talking about if, if a Jewish person owns a business, he may, not, he may not be a believer, but he closes his business down because that's Shabbat. That's Sunday. And when we were over there, you could not go in a Jewish store. You could not, you, not, you could not find a Jewish person working because it was Shabbat. And this is the covenant that God has with them that they were to keep that, that seventh day. They were to keep Saturday as their Sabbath day and they still keep it today. And I think that's a good thing. But you see, we as Christians today, we started out, if you study church history, we started out, uh, the Christians kept the, the Lord's day just like they keep Shabbat over there or Sabbath over there. We kept, we kept Sunday. But little by little by little by little, the devil and the world just kept creeping in and creeping in and creeping in. And now today, I've actually known preachers who got up and preached about keeping the Lord's day. And people laughed at him. Brother Mayberry told me in his group that he had a, uh, he preached about it. He preached about keeping the Lord's Day. And he had a young preacher make fun of him because he preached that Christians ought to keep the Lord's Day. Isn't that sad? You see what the Lord says here? This, this, is, this is a testimony to the world. Now I'm not preaching law to you. I'm preaching grace. I'm preaching about loving the Lord. And I'm talking about, I'm preaching about keeping Sunday because it's the day the Lord arose. And I'm talking about giving that day to the Lord, not because we have to, church, because we want to. Christians have a great witness and a great testimony when they take a stand. Let me tell you, if you don't have any convictions, you better get on the altar. If you don't have any convictions, you better read your Bible. If you, don't know how to, if you don't know how to live, if you don't know how to dress, if you don't know how to live for Jesus and, have, and, and witness for Jesus and take a stand for Jesus, you better read your Bible because the Bible teaches we need to stand for the Lord in a loving way. But we need to stand. Say amen again. Oh, I love to hear you say that. I'll probably preach another hour. Oh, boy, I ain't any amens on that. <laughs> You know, the Lord wants the Christian Sabbath to be a sign also between us and God. The Lord told Moses in Exodus chapter 31, verse 13, Speak thou also unto the children of Israel, saying, Verily my Sabbaths ye shall keep. For it is a sign between me and you throughout your generations, that you may know that I am the Lord that doth sanctify you. The Lord's day is a sign between a Christian and Jesus Christ. You see, it's what we do. It's our day that we've set aside. By the way, the government did not give you Sunday. Did you know that? Many people think, well, the government, the government decided that we were, going, we, were, we were going to have Sunday as the day. You know who decided that Sunday was going to be the day off? The church. Because the church worshipped on Sunday. Now the government recognized it, but the church already worshipped on Sunday. God gives us the freedom that we have. God gives us the right to worship Him. The government doesn't give us that. We worship Jesus because He is God. And we worship Him on Sunday because that's His day. Chick-fil-A. The founder of Chick-fil-A just passed away, Truett Cathy. He was a Christian man. I read the story, just a brief story of how he got started. And I don't remember the names. I think the first place that he started, just a little bitty place. Just a little bitty uh, uh, place to sell chicken sandwiches. And you know what he did? He wouldn't open on Sunday. Now, a lot of people think, I just got to open on Sunday because I got to make enough money to make it. But Brother Kathy said, no, if I can't make it in six days, I'm not going to take God's day. And so he wouldn't open. You know what happened? The Lord blessed him. He had to open another little place. It was bigger than the place before. He had to open another little place. And you know what he did? He closed on Sunday and went to church. 
and spent time with his family because he believed real he believed that the Christian Sabbath that is Sunday was a time to worship the Lord to be with his family to rest and to do the Lord's work and not only did he believe that he should do that he believed that others ought to have that he didn't believe he ought to force his workers to come in and work on Sunday because he wanted them to have the time to worship the Lord. He wanted them to have time to spend time with their family. He wanted them to have time to rest. He wanted them to have time to do the Lord's work. And so he closed on Sunday. You know what happened? God blessed him again. And he had to build a big Chick-fil-A. <laughs> Isn't that good? Amen. And the Lord just kept blessing him. And you know they're still closed on Sunday today and the Lord still keeps blessing. If you haven't been to a Chick-fil-A, you go. Let me tell you something, folks. I've been to a lot of fast food places and Chick-fil-A is a different place. Because this man kept the Lord's day. Because, and nobody made him. Amen. It wasn't a burden to him. It wasn't, it wasn't a preacher getting up there and saying, you've got to keep the Lord's day. This was something he decided to do because he read the Bible. He believed the principle of the scripture. He believed that Jesus rose from the grave on, uh, on, on Sunday and he believed it ought to be a special day and he kept it a special day and God blessed him for it. I believe he'd do that today. Sunday should be a day to worship the Lord that's good, isn't it? Nothing wrong with that, is there? To be in church on Sunday. To worship the Lord. To have family time. That's good, isn't it? I mean, that's just, that just makes good sense that man should have one day in seven. Boy, I wonder what would happen to family. There was a book written by one of the, I believe it's one of the, the, the Jewish uh, centers, what's his name? I can't get a hold of his name. There's a book written about the Sabbath day and it was written kindly to Christians because it was saying, look, here's what can happen. Here's the good things that can happen when people spend time with their families. Families on the rocks. The devil's tearing them apart right and left. What would happen if across America today we'd go back and People just say, you know, I'm going to take time on Sunday to spend with my kids. I'm going to take them to church. Amen? You can't spend better quality time with your family than in the Lord's house learning about right and wrong. What would happen if dads and moms said, we're going to take time on Sunday, Sunday morning and Sunday night, to spend with our family. And in the, in the afternoon after Sunday school, we're going to spend time loving our family. That's God's will. You see, that's what Sunday, that's what Sunday's all about. Yeah. Worship the Lord. To have family time. Rest. Anybody here don't want to rest? That's what it's about. It's a time for, you know, everybody, everybody I talk to says, I can't stop. I'm too busy. I'm doing this. I'm doing that. I'm running here. I'm running there. I'm doing this. Oh, oh, I just got so much going on. Well, if you stop on Sunday, you'll have one day that God will bless you and you can have peace and you can have rest. And it's to do the Lord's work. Sunday's not a day that, you know, Jesus said, uh, the Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath. He didn't mean that man could take that and go skiing and, and go to the lakes. And He didn't mean that for men to take that as their own recreation. He meant that for man to devote one day in seven to him. Believe it or not, I got through college. And on Sunday... I don't care how big the test was. And I'm not bragging on myself. I don't, mean, I, you know, I don't mean to do that. I don't mean that. I'm just trying to stress to you something. On Sunday, I didn't study. Now, every college kid loves that. <laughs> we don't have to study? <laughs> okay, that's good. No, no. I had to study twice as hard on Saturday. Amen? But on Sunday was God's day. 
And you know what? A lot of them didn't think I was going to, but I made it through, I made it through college. I even went to some graduate school. God will bless you if you do what he asks. If you love the Lord, he'll love you back. If you love the Lord, he'll love you back ten times over what you love him. God will love you. And he'll bless you. And that's why we've got up here somewhere. Where is it? The Lord's Day. It's what this church stands for. This is an age when some people, you're blessed tonight, just being, not because I'm preaching. But you know that you can go to some church 52 Sundays a year and you'll never hear a sermon on the Lord's Day. Did you know you can watch some of these TV, and I'm not knocking them if they preach the gospel. I'm, I'm not, not picking on them. I'm just saying simply that America has drifted far away from where God wants us to be. Amen? I'm, let me tell you what's important in life. God and people. Amen? But let me tell you what's important to you in life. It's important to you and to your children, to their children's children and so on. It's important to have a good Christian, Bible-believing home. That's the most important thing. That should be the most important goal in your life. Because let me tell you, what your children are facing out in the world is just downright scary. And to face it without God is ridiculous. And yet people, people all across America are too busy to stop on the Lord's Day and take their children to church and teach their children what's right and wrong and to let their children know that they love God and they want them to love God. You need a Bible-believing home. You need a King James Bible believing church where you and your family can come with other families who believe the same thing and you can come in harmony and you can worship the Lord together and you can get strength from each other and give strength to one another. You need a Bible believing church. The devil is trying to tear families apart. The devil is tearing husbands and wives apart wholesale today. And the reason is because they're not in church, they're not saved, they don't believe the Bible, they're not following Jesus, and they're wide open to the devil's attacks. You need a good family, a loving family, a close family, a caring family. You need a good church. Amen? And I'm telling you, your children need a Christian education. Now, there's many ways of doing that. But you need a Christian. There's going to be things, there's going to be things come down the educational line. They already have, but there's going to be a lot more. And I don't have time to go into them tonight. There's going to come, there's going to things come down through uh, the schools that you're not going to believe. They're already teaching in many schools. Don't believe in God. Believe in science. Well, I'm for science. True science. Amen. I'm for an education, but just something's changed. We used to have education in this country. We used to have science in this country that was based on the fear of God. Now it's not based on the fear of God. I'm just telling you the truth. I mean, it's just so important. It's so important to understand that the Lord's Day, God gave us the Lord's Day. Jesus arose on Sunday for a reason. He gave us the Lord's Day so families could be safe. He gave us the Lord's Day so children could be loved and be secure. He gave us the Lord's Day so people would uh, be, there would be a witness between the church and, and the world and people could see that they needed to get saved. They need to go to heaven. The last thing. 
I'm leaving a lot out. But I'm putting a lot in. That's fair, right? Amen? The Lord's day is a blessing for those who keep it under the Lord. I was in the Spirit on the Lord's day and heard behind me a great voice as of a trumpet. Now, the Lord's day is a blessing to those who keep it. Turn with me to Isaiah chapter 58. Isaiah 58. And let me read there verses 13 and 14. Listen carefully to this. Isaiah 58 verse 13 and 14. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath... Now, it's not talking about turning away from the Sabbath. It's talking about, well, listen, let me read it. If thou turn away thy foot from the Sabbath from doing thy pleasure on my holy day and call the Sabbath a delight, the holy of the Lord, honorable and shalt honor him, not doing thine own way, nor finding thine own pleasure, nor speaking thine own words, then then shalt thou delight thyself in the Lord, and I will cause thee to ride upon the high places of the earth and feed thee with the heritage of Jacob thy father, for the mouth of the Lord hath spoken it. Now I understand today. It's hard in the world in which we live to keep the Lord's day because that's not the way of the world. But let me tell you something. It's always been hard. It was hard back in the Apostle Paul's day. Paul, Paul preached and taught. He preached and taught in the Roman Empire. And that was not a Christian, that was not a Christian government. That was an ungodly, wicked government. They were not for Christians. The Apostle John was on the Isle of Patmos because he was under a wicked, ungodly government that did not tolerate the preaching of the gospel and under under, uh, Domitian and Nero, thousands of Christians died because they just simply were Christians. It was not easy. So I understand when your employer says, you've got to work on Sunday. I know how hard it is. And... I want you to understand, I'm not judging you. And I don't want you to feel judged. But this is something we do because we love the Lord. Amen? And every, you know, work out your own salvation with fear and with prayer. I'm not saying it don't matter because it does. I'm just saying I understand. But you see what Isaiah 58, 13 and 14 says? If we stop doing our own pleasure on Sunday. Now, all of us can do that, can't we? We can say, okay, I, I used to go fishing. I used to go hunting, and I can, and I, you, there's this old thing, you know, I can worship the Lord out in the woods. No, you can't. Not like God wants you to. Because He wants you to stop your pleasure on Sunday. Amen? And He wants you to think about Him. He wants you to love Him. Because in loving Him, we love ourselves. You see, if we stop doing our own pleasure on Sunday, Sunday. I had a church one time. Young men, I was just a kid, but the men of the church got to playing baseball on Sunday. And sports can kind of take over. And so it wasn't very long before they had to cut out the church preaching to get to wherever they were going to play ball. And so they would, there would be this mass exodus right after Sunday school where these men would leave and go to play ball. And, and the preacher said, uh-uh, that's not going to work. And some people got really upset about it. But he said, that's not scriptural. He said, I, I, you know, I don't remember all that he said. I wasn't in all those meetings. But you know, some of those people really got upset and hot about it. But you know, eventually they came around and they understood what the preacher was telling them was right. And that stopped. What's your pleasure? What is it you can give to God? See, on Sunday we need to give some things to the Lord, don't we? Amen? Amen. I follow the Cardinals. I'm a Cardinal fan. I'm a baseball fan. I wonder what the Cubs are doing this (laughs) offseason. We got a Cub fan over here. He and I go back and forth all the time. But on Sunday, the Cardinals are on their own. Amen? Amen. Sunday's the Lord's Day. And you see, God says, 
This is a day to stop and focus on me. It's good for your family. It's good for your church. It's good for your country to stop and think about God. Oh, how I wish. And we've had some presidents. We've had some presidents who simply would not do anything on Sunday. How I wish our modern presidents would just simply stop and set an example and say, Sunday is the Lord's day. I want you to be in church. You, can you imagine the change in this country if our president would say, Sunday is the Lord day, Lord's day, I'm going to church, and I want you to go to church. Boy, there's some people eat him up. There's some people get really mad at him if he said that, but that's what needs to be said. If we stop doing our own pleasure on Sunday, if we call the Sabbath, listen to this, if we call, I'm going to say the Lord's Day, if we call the Lord's Day a delight, a holy day, Lord, I want to live for you. And on I'm, six days a week, you've given me to work and to labor and to play and to do all the things that I need and want to do. But on Sunday, if I can at all, by the grace of God, I'm going to make that a holy day for me and my family. I'm not going to force people. I'm going to love the Lord. And I'm going to do it because I love the Lord. If we honor the Lord, not doing our own ways, our own pleasures, even talking about our own interests, the Bible says, if we give that day to God, God will bless us. You see, Sunday is a day to be in the spirit of the Lord, not in the spirit of the world. Let me tell you about Eric Liddell. Some of you have heard of him. Some of you know about him. He was a fast runner. He was a Scottish runner. He's a dedicated Christian man. He became a missionary and died on the mission field in China. But before he went to the mission field, and he'd given his whole life to Christ, before he became a missionary, he had a great testimony for the Lord's Day. You see, he was very, very fast. And he got to represent his country in the Olympics. And he was so good. He ran the 100 meters, and they were sure that he could take the gold in the 100 meters. And he was signed up to run the 100 meters for his country. But something happened. They schedule the race on Sunday. Eric Liddell was a Christian man who had convictions. And he said, I'm not going to run on Sunday. I'm sorry. I don't want to disappoint people, but I'm not going to run on Sunday. That's the Lord's day. You know the king came to see him. I mean, you talk about pressure. I mean, there were some people who put pressure. The newspapers, I mean, they, they talked bad about him. They put pressure. This man, who in the world did he think he was that he could reschedule the race? Who in the world did he think he was that he wouldn't run for his country? And Eric Liddell said, I'm not going to run on Sunday. Now that took something. That took believing in God. And he didn't run on Sunday. God is so good, isn't he? Amen. Later on in the week, there was a 400. Now, he trained for the 100-meter race. And there was a 400-meter race that he could run in. And so they put him in that race. And he ran. And he won. And he set a world's record. I wonder who was pushing him. Amen? Amen? You see, God will bless people. I don't know that it turns out like that. Sometimes when we stand to the Lord, we've got to suffer. we just got to stand there. He suffered, but he was willing to suffer the Lord. And he said, let me tell you, the Lord's day is so important. I don't care if the whole world says i got to run. I'm not going to run. John, I think we ought to... Uh, Rename it. You know, we call it S-U-N-D-A-Y, Sunday. I think we ought to call it S-O-N-D-A-Y. Amen? It's the Son's Day. It's God's Day. 
John was in the Spirit on the Lord's Day. I wish we had a lot of Johns today. I want to get in the Spirit when I come to church. I want to see other people in the Spirit. You ever been a, I know you have because we've had some here. I mean, boy, to, to, to sense in a, in a quiet way. I've seen it happen both ways. I've seen God move in and people get excited and shout and praise God. But you know, the most, the precious thing to me is when everybody just gets quiet and you just know that God is there. I mean, that's something, folks. That's something nobody can deny that when it just gets quiet because you're sitting in the presence of God and He begins to move. And people begin to come to the altar. Souls begin to get saved. Revival breaks out. That's what we need. If America wants revival, Christians will have to return to the Lord's day. Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you for tonight. and Thank you for your word. We ask you now to be with us. That's what we need more than anything else. We need the Spirit of the Lord to guide us and direct us. In Jesus' name, amen. Ask our song leader to come and give us a song of invitation.